What's up fellas? We did some modifications to the Mega Godzilla burner today and we're going to be taking a look at its new performance characteristics. We've increased the power output and the way we did that was reduce the amount of ejector power. Alright, we got a lot to do today. First thing on the agenda is to design a restrictor plate to put on the back of this burner. The amount of air coming out of this thing is so enormous that it's acting like an ejector pump. If you're not sure what an ejector is, Google steam ejectors or just a regular ejector and you'll get the idea. We are blasting 500 cubic foot per minute approximately out of the front of this. It's literally like a leaf blower because this powerful jet, kind of the same way your toilet flushes. You know how that little water jet going in the toilet pulls all the water out of the bowl? That's called an ejector. So everybody has an ejector in their house, they just don't know it. And you use one every day. And that's kind of what's happening here. This blast of air is pulling so much secondary air into this pre-burner that we are acting more like a pump than a pre-burner. I want to reduce the air input. We could do that two ways. We could move this forward, which reduces the efficiency of the air horn or the ejector effect. Or we can put a restrictor plate in here that has a hole about the size of a quarter is what I'm thinking. Yesterday we seen a bunch of this testing and one of the tests I did was a balloon flame test where we run this thing at very high air input and very low fuel input. And you can see here we have no flame in the back end. Can you see that? You don't see any fire, you don't see any sparks. And this thing isn't really glowing red hot, nor does it. So I end the test. I got a feeling the back hole's just a little bit too big. This right here is a two year old video where I had the same hunch and look at that. Look at the size of that back hole. We got kind of the same thing going. This is as high as I can turn this burner up guys or else it'll flame out. So again, let's see what a little modification can do. I wanna show you how much power this burner has. You can see how much fuel we're using there. I'm gonna turn the air up and the restrictor plate is already working wonders on this burner. It's already running higher than it was, but just for the purpose of illustration, you can see I just turned the air up right there. I'm now gonna turn the fuel up again, just to show you how much power we got into this thing. Now I'm turning the air up and the fuel a little bit at the same time there. So even though this flame looks small, you can see we ramped it up in two stages. And now that it's not acting so much like an ejector, we're able to get that toroidal vortex fireball to stay at the very rear end of the burner. This is the max power with that big massive intake port there. It's just acting too much like an air horn and it's also called an ejector. So I just wanted to show you guys that, that I can validate that hunch. This happened to me about two years ago, and man, did that increase the performance. See how much smaller that back hole is now? And it's causing the inner turbulence that we need to hold the flame in place that gives us an opportunity to cram more energy into a smaller area. Before, we were throwing all that energy out the front end and to a point where we couldn't even combust it. The second thing on the agenda is our air supply. This air compressor is just too gnarly. If you can keep it on, it will run, but the second it hits 125 PSI and the unloader kicks on and it idles down, when it goes to kick back on, it sometimes dies on me. So it's just a little too gnarly. I think we need to put this pulley back on there. This is just too gnarly. The RPMs were, it was never meant to do this. This pump's supposed to have two belts on it. There's just all kind of wrong going on here. We did manage to get this thing up to 20 cubic foot per minute. And this is only 18. I wanted to show you this, by the way. I come out here and got all freaked out. I seen my tank all cracked up. I thought I was about to die because I had pressure in it. What they did. So this has just been rusting away on me. I didn't even know it. So I'm going to have to sandblast this and paint this. They tried to like hide a dent on me or something. 
All right, Murphy's Law all day. Now, about five years ago, I posted a video on this air compressor where we overclocked it. I had all different size of pulleys we tried on here. We had one bigger than this, but we found out that you just can't do that. What we started doing was waddling out the pulley and throwing pulleys off the compressor. It'd run for about an hour. Next thing you know, a pulley would come flying by at 50 miles an hour. So, guys, no joke, this thing would fill the tanks up in like 10 seconds. You see how deformed that is? The engine bent the freaking pulley up, dude. Look at that. This thing come flying by me, dude, 50 miles an hour. We took it down to this size right here. I have a whole video where I clocked the RPMs and just did a whole mathematics show and everything on this thing. But this was reasonable enough that you could get about 20 cubic foot per minute out of a five horsepower air compressor, which is phenomenal. So this thing has been Loctited on here because during experimentation, we actually threw a couple of pulleys. If I get to it, I'll leave a link in the description of the video of me overclocking this. This is not the original compressor, obviously, as you could tell. Um, I added this on here to make a super compressor. Same thing with this pulley. So we got to get this back on here today because this thing, if the unloader kicks on when it hits 125 PSI, sometimes when the loader kicks off, the unloader, the air compressor will die because there's not enough torque to rev this back up. I just, I can kind of tell it's too gnarly. We got to get this off here and this thing ain't coming off. So I got to heat it up to bust that Loctite I used. Any of you guys who ever done any actual development work know the struggle required to get an experiment underway during the day. Like if you've worked with NASA, you've worked out on the oil fields, if you've ever built any type of factory or machine that doesn't exist yet, it's insane the amount of work that goes into just getting the experiment up and running. I'm talking about just the experiment that's going to help you build the real thing, let alone the real deal. Like plan on your generators not generating enough power. Plan on your compressors not compressing enough. Like just plan for the worst so you're not surprised. That's all I can say because so much went into getting ready for the experiment today that we don't have time to conduct the experiment. And that's typical of these adventures. This is what we come up with. I had it on the bottom at first, but then I remember there's something about these setups where every time the engine fires, every fourth rotation, a large pulse of energy slams forward and sends this belt flapping so it can actually make the belt fly off you could be plenty tight but if you ain't got something on the low tension side of the belt it'll vibrate so rapidly and violently that it will throw the belt off the wheel so you got to have your tension pulley on the no torque side you can't put it on the torque side this is the side that's pulling and making it spin Maybe I can throttle it down now. I got it throttled up so bad to try and compensate for that. That ain't too bad. Let's see what happens here. Right on. Start it back up. Okay, we're good. All right. It's kind of late, and I'm getting a a lot more polite in my old age, so we're not going to be able to fire this up. Only during work hours.
just gonna do a short burst. We're gonna turn it on, get it going full blast, and then we gotta shut it off. Freaking brutal. The restrictor plate worked. Might even be able to use a dab more, but I think we just need more air pressure at this point. We need more air. I'm gonna turn this back on air. Let it normalize. All right, fellas, so essentially, once again, I did not have enough air pressure to do the job. I've grown outside of myself. So this is the restrictor plate. It did give us that fire in the back end that we want. You can see here, we reached about 600 degrees right here in this blue zone. In this yellow straw color area. We only got to about 400 degrees on the very back end, but we weren't running for very long, so that's good. This tells me that if we were able to get 100 to 120 PSIs in this thing, it would look like one of my smaller Godzilla burners on a larger scale. So we're gonna see this thing tomorrow, and we're gonna run it a little bit longer. We're gonna figure out what the power output is, and I'm gonna run it on some waste oil so we can actually see the flame.